Hello there, strangers. Um, it's been a really long time since I filmed a video. Um, I feel like I've aged <laughs> since I last filmed the video. That's how long it's been. So, um, I'm still alive. Um, you know, the usual excuses, work, general busyness, seasonal depression. But with the added bonus of the fact that if you didn't see my Instagram story from... I don't remember when I posted it. Uh, I am moving to Oregon in the summer. So I'm not sure exactly when, but um, my whole family's moving. So I'm not sure of our what our living situation is going to be at the moment, but um, we're going to be living in Eugene. So it's about an hour and a half from Portland, but um, I'm excited about it, but I hate moving. I especially hate cross country moves. You guys might already know that I moved to Chicago from Orlando and that was about, I can't believe it, it's been almost five years. Oh my God. But it was the like best decision ever to do that move. And moving to Orlando from Cincinnati was also a great decision. So I think that it's going to be a good thing, but I'm just like, oh my God, there's so many things I have to do. I'm just stressed out. I'm stressed out about moving the cats again because that was the biggest nightmare of all. Um, was flying with the cats, but I don't know if we're going to fly with them, if we're going to use a pet courier. If you guys have any tips about big moves or pets with moving, stuff like that, I would appreciate any kind of advice you might have. Also, if you have ever lived in Oregon or have been to Oregon, I've been before, but um, for about two weeks I went to Portland for my brother's wedding, and I'm going again this month, um, but... I still would appreciate any feedback. So uh, I have so many things to talk about, you guys. I just have to get this thing rolling. Um, I wanted to do like a favorites type video just because it's been so long and there are so many things that I want to talk to you guys about. I hope this video is not like a million hours long. Um, the first thing I will mention, because I think I'll forget if I don't, is this purse is from Who, What, Where for Target. It's faux fur, obviously. It's uh, very well loved. It has like cat fur on the back of it. This is like a faux suede kind of material on the back. It has like a strap that I can wear crossbody. It's like, I, I need to, um, this, if anyone knows like how I can clean this, uh, let me know because I'm, this part is getting a little bit ragged from me constantly like resting my arm there but I can fit so much stuff in here and I get comments all the time on the street asking me where I got this purse and people are always shocked when I say it was from Target but um I love it I can fit all my crap in it I can fit my bagu totes because um Chicago we have bag tax which is great because I don't want to keep using plastic bags all the time but um I use my bagu totes when I go grocery shopping and stuff so I can fit those in there my makeup bag, I can throw an umbrella in there, I can throw my book in there, even if it's a giant hardcover. So it's good stuff, and uh, I love it. So I just wanted to throw that out there really quickly. Also, yeah, I don't have any kind of food favorites or anything this month. You guys know I tend to do that a lot. Um, I'm gonna do this really quick first because I feel like I'm gonna get questions about it, and I always put this stuff in the info box, but just in case. The nail polish I'm wearing right now is, I'm like, obsessed. I just painted my nails last night, but this is the shade Los Feliz by o Odeme, I think it's pronounced. Odeme. And um, I, you can get this from uh, J. Crew, or I got it from J. Crew, but I think you can also get it from like Bandeau. I'm sure there's other places online. I haven't really done much research on it. I just saw it and was like, I need this in my life. It's like the perfect mustard yellow. They have another one called Gold Lion, but that one is a little bit more of a brown undertone of a mustard. But um, hello, the line has two mustards in it. <laughs> it's like it was created by me. But I love the packaging of the box too. Like I don't even want to throw the box away. So um, a couple other like random type favorites I'm just going to throw in in the beginning. Uh, Target, you know, how much do I love Target? <laughs> um, came out with vintage reproductions of the 1983 My Little Ponies. This is minty. I have three of them. I have Cotton Candy and Snuzzle also, but these are all the ones that they have. Um, and it's the cutest. I don't even want to take them out of the box. Um, and then they also came out with reproductions for the 35th anniversary of 
Care Bears. So they have Cheer Bear and Share Bear. But if you guys know me at all, you know that I'm like a total uh, whore for nostalgia. I love things from my childhood. I love the 80s and the 90s and um, I love living in the past basically. <laughs> so those just like, I had to have them. I literally like tracked them down and like went to different targets to find them until I did. So yeah, that's how uh, that's how much of a dork I am. But um, I also know that I'm gonna forget to mention these things if I don't do it already. Where did my little paper go? Oh, here it is. Okay, so I have been loving watching old movies. Um, and one of my all time favorites, which I feel like people don't talk about enough, and so I wanted to mention it on here, is Charade, which I freaking love Cary Grant. Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart are my favorite actors from like the 50s and 60s um, and earlier. They were famous for a long time. And Audrey Hepburn, I used to not think Audrey Hepburn was anything that great. I just knew that she had a pet deer for a while, a fawn, and um, that just like warmed my heart. But I didn't really know that much else about her. But she is so great in comedic roles, I feel like. And Charade and also um, How to Steal a Million are just like fantastic for that kind of like, they're kind of like noir, suspense, comedy. It's like this kind of genre isn't made very much anymore, but I love this. And I also have been watching old Hitchcock movies, but Hitchcock movies, it's one of those things, like I love Hitchcock movies. Rear Window is my favorite. But um, I also cannot help thinking about like what kind of person Alfred Hitchcock was in real life. We'll read into it. <laughs> um, it's very interesting stuff. But um, for TV though, I have been completely obsessed with 911. It is so good. Um, I haven't really liked anything Ryan Murphy in a while. I used to be obsessed with American Horror Story, but I haven't watched the last few seasons because I just kind of kept being disappointed by it. Um, and then Superstore. I love Superstore. It is my, it, I think it's the funniest show on TV and nobody talks about it. So if you're not watching Superstore already, you should. I also follow several of the cast members on Instagram and they are amazing. So um, yeah. And then uh, Queer Eye on Netflix. Holy crap. Like I literally made a list of these things, you guys. <laughs> I always forget to mention this kind of stuff. Um, I literally loved the new Queer Eye reboot so much that I immediately followed all of the guys on it on Instagram. And one night I was flipping through Instagram and I was like, oh, how cute. I love that they all like comment on each other's posts with like really positive things and like uplifting things. I was like, I love that they're like really friends. And and then I think I fell asleep soon after. And I'm not joking, I had a dream that I was at some kind of party with all the guys from Queer Eye. And I was like, oh, we have to like do a photo shoot before like my makeup starts to look bad and before like we get drunk and stuff, which I don't even really drink that much. So <laughs> this is clearly a dream, but um, I was like, I woke up and I was like, oh, I didn't really meet them. Uh, but yeah, so I loved Queer Eye. Every single episode pretty much made me cry. So you just need to see it. Uh, it's great. And I love like the, the route that they took with this season. So, and then the other thing is I posted about this last night on Instagram, but again, it was in my story, so you might not see it. Um, they have the full series of Babysitter's Club the television show on Hulu. One of my friends posted about it and I was like, holy crap, I know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> so I have like binge watched. I'm like, last night I watched a lot of the episodes, but I am still a few episodes short of finishing. So I um, am going to finish watching that. Also, I just wanted to give like a little YouTube channel shout out because I feel like she doesn't have a ton of subscribers. She has a decent number, definitely a lot more than me, but um, Francesca Garza, she's Alexandra Garza's younger sister. Um, I love her vlogs and I've really been enjoying watching them. So um, I like like her decor style and stuff. So I recommend checking her out too. I will write all of this stuff in the info box just so you know. And um, you guys, I, I just wanted to throw it out there. I'm gonna list these in the info box. This is not even, this is probably half of the books that I've read since I've last posted a video. Half. I've read a lot of books. So um, these were probably my favorite ones that I read. 
so shiver by junji ito i said i'm gonna put these all in the description box too um everything you want me to be nevermore um the seven husbands of evelyn hugo is probably my favorite book i've read so far this year which you know obviously it's only been a few months but it's really good and the woman in the window oh my god all these were amazing um yeah I'll put more in the info box. I did want to say though, really quickly though, Shiver. This is a book of short stories by Jinji Ito. He's the one who did Uzumaki, which I always talk about that that book. Uh, this book is scary as crap. <laughs> like just a heads up. I still love it. I, I, all of his stuff scary as crap, honestly. But um, so good. Oh my god, I have so much stuff to talk about still. I will say one thing that I freaking hate with all of my being is this little mirror that I got from Target. I was like, oh cute, a rose gold like mirror. I can use it to do my makeup and stuff. No, this thing falls off all the time. It scares the crap out of me. And it's like, yeah, it just did it just now too. I'm like, I don't know how to make it stay on. Like I have these little twist ties. I keep putting them on it. It still falls off. I'm like, what? And I get fingerprints all over it because it's always falling. I hate it. Don't buy this. It was like $10 and I wish that I would have returned it. I don't think I even have the receipt anymore. So let's talk about skincare, hair care, and then I'll talk about perfume and then makeup. Sound good? Oh, that reminds me of something Diana's been saying lately. She goes, uh, she goes, okay, make a deal. <laughs> I don't know where she got that from, but okay, make a deal. I love that. So cute. So, um, I've been obsessed with this moisturizer. I'm, I'm kind of, so I'm kind of confused. It's from Riley Rose and Riley Rose has a lot of, um, Korean skincare brands. I believe this is a Korean brand. Um, pardon my ignorance if it's not, but it's the brand Nuka and I have not seen pretty much anything about this brand, but the packaging is freaking adorable. I'm loving the millennial pink, you guys. I'm such a basic biatch. But um, it has an expiration date on the bottom, which is cool. But it's called the All Strike Total Solution. And it says on the back, it's all in one skin plus lotion plus essence, which to me makes it feel like you should be using a moisturizer along with it because like an essence and a lotion are things that you put on before. Um, like the traditional like Korean sense of a lotion is more like a toner that's um, moisturizing. So I don't know but I've been using it as a moisturizer and I love this pump. Oh my gosh. And it smells really nice. It's not like a strong scent. I feel like most people would like it and I just love it. It goes well under makeup and stuff. It's not, I've been kind of liking more heavy moisturizers though. And this one is on the lighter side, but I still really, really like this. And I feel like I'm going to have to repurchase this before I move. Cause I don't know if I'll have access to Riley Rose anymore. I know they have a website now, but also I am gutted that I love this as much as I do because it's, hella expensive for a cleanser. It's the Dr. Jart Dermaclear Microgel Cleanser. And what's weird is, so I'm, I'm like very far down on the bottle and it's taken me a long time to get to this point. There's, it says it's 8.4 ounces, fluid, fluid ounces, but it's taken me a really long time to use this up. It's a very thick gel, so you need just a very small amount and it foams up so nicely on my skin and removes makeup really well. Like it's a great, I always use a makeup wipe before I cleanse, but it works really well. And what's weird is I was like halfway down the bottle when I realized that it has like microbeads in it, which I hate microbeads, but these ones actually dissolve like in your hand. So I don't think that they are necessarily bad for the environment because I try not to use anything with microbeads anymore. But um, yeah, again, expiration date on the bottom. I love that about Asian brands. So this is so good. I love how it smells too. It kind of smells like lemony, but in like a really clean way, not in like a bleh way. I don't know, maybe more like lemongrass, but it smells amazing. I love how this works. I would probably repurchase it. I got it during one of the Sephora or the last Sephora sale. So, uh, I don't know if I would pay full price for it. <laughs> it was expensive. It was like $38, I think. Which is crazy. Um, but okay other things for skincare and stuff the um kristen s rose gold temporary tint is kind of a pain in the butt to use but it's such an innovative and fun product that i just had to put this in the video um it says to use this on wet hair 
but you're supposed to like towel dry it. So I would like wash my hair and you're supposed to clean your hair first. So I would wash my hair. I would like put my hair like out of the shower and like towel dry it and then spray it on and leave it on for a few minutes and then rinse it out. And it's pretty messy to use, which I think is why you're supposed to use it in the shower. Um, but one of my friends, her username on Instagram is I'm a little cupcake. I hope that she doesn't mind that I'm sharing this, uh, knowledge but what she did was she like sprayed it into a cup and she at first was like painting it on but then she said that she just like poured it onto her strands and um it left it on for about five minutes and it really took the color well when she posted photos of it so I like I asked her how she did it because her hair is kind of similar to mine where it's just light at the ends so worth trying definitely very fun like it's a pink tint to your hair which I just think is so much fun I've always wanted to be gem as you guys know um, so yeah there's that and then I wanted to mention this too which I've loved since Christmas time I'm very far down on this even though you can't tell from the sides this is the uh, what's this brand called again Pacha soap company whip soap and scrub it's the peppermint twist one which this came out during the holidays it's like this is so messy because it's been in my shower but um, oh my god it smells so good and what's great about this is you can use it daily it says so on the tub um, and it's really nicely exfoliating but it also does feel like a cleanser but it doesn't have that like drying feeling of a soap um, or like a whipped soap sometimes feels like leaves like a that squeaky clean feeling I really hate of uh, just a traditional soap um, but I love this. I actually loved this so much, even when I first got it, that I wanted to buy a backup of it, and I could not find this particular scent again any, at any Whole Foods. It was from Whole Foods. But um, you can find other scents from this brand at Whole Foods still, so still worth checking out. I actually saw the Vanilla Butter one, which is another Christmas one there, like the last time I was at Whole Foods, so they might still have it at One by You. Worth checking out for sure. So, um... The next thing I will show you is perfumes. I have been I like rediscovering my, um, oh God, I know, I don't know how to say this name. <laughs> Elisab, Elisab. I'm thinking it's Elisab, but it's the resort collection. I like, I kind of like all of her, his. I don't know, I'm not that into <laughs> fashion, can you tell? I mean, I am, but I'm, you know. Um, this scent is so good. It's like bubble gummy, but nice and sophisticated at the same time. I don't really know how to explain it. It was, I'm pretty sure it was limited edition, but you can always still find perfumes and stuff online, I feel like. But I love this so much. It's like a great everyday scent, and I've been wearing this a ton lately. And my other numero uno favorite, 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 which I've talked about, I think I talked about this in a video before. I know I post about it on Instagram. This is the Byredo Seven Veils perfume, which the SA at Barney's told me that they were going to be discontinuing the scent the last time I was there, and it like broke my heart because to me it's their best scent. <laughs> it smells amazing. I was in an Uber one time, and the driver actually like he told me that I smelled good, and then later on in the ride he asked me what I was wearing because he wanted to buy it for his wife so I was like that's a really like that's a big compliment but he was like you smell, smell like like brown sugar and like it's so delicious and um I think it smells kind of like carrot cake and vanilla -y. and it's just like but it's spicy and like mmm I just love it like every time I spray and it's like comforting like when I spray it on myself and like when I can smell it on myself and it has pretty good longevity longevity for Byredo too I feel like some of their scents don't last as long on me um but whenever I smell it on myself it just like kind of relaxes me a little and makes me feel like calm I've been taking meditation classes sometimes with my dad and I usually wear this when I go there too because it's like that gives me that like calming feeling so um yeah then two other ones I just wanted to throw out there uh, this Demeter Pixie Dust one. Um, Demeter does not have great lasting power. It's mostly just alcohol, but they are really inexpensive, like under $20. This one I found at Riley Rose also. And um, to me, it just smells like toys from the 80s. So just, uh, yeah, if that appeals to you, worth checking out. The other one was actually sent to me. And what was so f serendipitous about this is that 
I was going to ask for this for Christmas and then I was like no it's something I should just get for myself at some point and and then I saw it was on Octoli and I was like oh my god and so I requested it and they sent it to me and I was like this is like the best Christmas gift ever and um I love it so much it's by Bastide which is a newer brand I believe um it's a French brand you can buy it at uh, Nordstrom they actually have it in store at the Nordstrom on Michigan Avenue but oh it's just it reminds me of Byredo Accord Oud um, this one is called Amber Makia, I forgot to say, uh, but it smells amazing. And I loved this so much that I went out and got the mini spray of the Rose Olivier. And I also picked up the Fig hand cream, which uh, smells amazing. And it's the perfect little pocket size. And I always love this kind of packaging too. It's so French. Um, yeah, I can't believe I haven't even gotten to makeup yet. And this is already 20 minutes. You guys, I know this is going to be like the longest video ever. But I feel like you guys will be okay with it because I haven't filmed in so long. I hope that I'm right. Um, yeah, so for makeup, first thing I have to mention, MAC brought back uninterrupted eyeshadow. And my friend Jess, the palest peach on um, Instagram, she posted a comparison of this with the original uninterrupted, which was, it was originally a pro long wear shadow, so it had like a larger pan. Um, and it's a little bit different, I think that this one, I can't remember if this one was a little bit lighter or darker. Crap, I can't remember. But um, anyways, I'm just really happy they brought this back because my Bobbi Brown Camel is like a mess. It's like cracked and feels really dry and it's been going on a little patchy. So I felt like I needed to replace it anyways. But this is cheaper and I've been wanting this for a long time and it's supposed to be a dupe. So there's a box back there my cats have been playing with. That's what that noise is. Also, uh, I'm actually, oh yeah, I was going to say that I'm wearing uninterrupted right now with this blended out in the crease, what crease I have because I have hooded eyes as you know. Um, this is the Urban Decay SGH eyeshadow, which, uh, SGH stands for sister golden hair. It was, um, this is part of the Kristen Leanne, um, collection and this one actually what's weird is that I have not seen this they have it on the Urban Decay website which you can get free shipping if um you like sign up for their program or whatever I don't really get emails from them or anything though but um I haven't seen it in any stores or anything which sucks because it's like so gorgeous but this is a comparison of the two of these but I'm wearing this in my um crease too so that's sister golden hair and that's uninterrupted so you see like when people say like a mustardy shade that's, that's quite a range right there because my nails are mustard too <laughs> like th there's a range oh no I'm almost out of space how can this be crap okay space has been made um let's move on into the makeup so first of all my Lancome Tan Idol Ultra makeup stick is still my favorite, favorite, favorite foundation. Um, it just can't be beat. I'm excited to try, ooh, I'm excited to try the new, um, what's it called? The L'Oreal foundation sticks that I'm pretty sure are coming here because they are just like coming out in the UK right now. So I'm pretty sure that we're going to be getting them soon. Um, I'm excited to try those because I just want like something that's cheaper but works as well. But I know it won't happen. Lancome is just so good. Uh, but this baby, oh my God, there's a mirror and it's like reflecting my mouth. <laughs> it's like, like what I can see it. It's scary. Um, the Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation is freaking amazing. It has one of those weird doe foots, which I don't mind these. The only thing is that it doesn't uh, pick up that much product. It smells kind of weird. It, it smells like another drugstore. It smells kind of like maybe it's the original co color stay by Revlon that it smells like. It smells, it has like that weird like chocolatey smell. I don't know how to describe it, but um, it's not bad. But this foundation is so, so good. It gives a lovely like it's lighter coverage, but it does cover and it makes my skin look so dewy and just like lit from within glow but it doesn't feel tacky or sticky which a lot of times dewy foundations do um it completely sinks in it feels really comfortable on the skin and it lasts amazingly well so 
and this uh, shade is actually a good match for me too. This is the shade Light Neutral 4. Unfortunately, this shade range sucks. There's very few shades, which, you know, we gotta do better brands, we gotta do better. So, but if your skin tone is similar to mine, uh, definitely worth checking out. There are, uh, I wanna say like eight shades, I'm not as positive, but worth checking out. Also this, I've been obsessed with. It's the Milani Stay Put Matte 17 Hour Wear Liquid Liner, which 17 hours, I don't know, pushing it. I'm wearing it right now. What I like about it, it's a pain to put on. It has, I don't like, like this is a very, very flexible tip. And I don't know if you can see it. It's very flexible. And I don't really like that because it makes it easy to mess up um, and it dries very quickly but I love the fact that it dries fully matte and um, if you know what I'm talking about like other liquid liners like felt tip liners a lot of times they end up looking really shiny your eyeshadow will transfer on them and they'll kind of disappear this doesn't happen with this one it stays matte and black all day long so I freaking love this. It doesn't transfer or do any of that kind of stuff. Um, even with like my eyes watering and stuff, I still haven't had that many issues with it because my eyes water like crazy in the winter because it's just so dry. But love that, definitely worth checking out. Also, my mascara obsession, I've actually gone, this is my second tube of this. I love it so much. It's YSL The Shock. It's definitely more of a volumizing mascara as opposed to a lengthening mascara. It has this kind of like wand. It is scented which is definitely weird for mascara, but it doesn't irritate my eyes at all, so I don't really care that it's scented. Like, that's not a bad thing in my opinion. Um, but, okay, what's so great about this mascara? First of all, I don't know if you can see, it makes my lashes look really, really full. And um, the other thing, which I really took me trying Benefit Bad Gal Bang, which I hate that mascara. I hated it so much. It made gave me like five long lashes. Like it clumped them all together into like five lashes that looked really wet. Um, and they, I mean, they were long, but they were all clumped together. And then at the end of the day, my mascara was smudged all down here, all up here. It was like, what happened to my face? And that was just like a regular day. So I, I was not a fan and I tried it a few days and had similar results. But with this one, I do not get any smudging or flaking, even when it gets dry, like towards the end of the its life. I didn't get any kind of smudging, any kind of flaking or transferring whatsoever. So uh, that's like, that alone makes it worth repurchasing over and over again. But the fact that it also makes my lashes look really nice, huge, huge win. I have been thinking about trying uh, Rodan and Fields Lash Boost though. If any of you guys have tried that or Lilash or any of, uh, of those other like lash lengthening things, um, give me your input because I would like to hear. So I said before, I've been into the Millennial Pink lately and I had ordered this eyeshadow after Joelle Hyman, who is one of my favorite Instagrammers, posted something about it and um, it's a pink eyeshadow and I was like what am I what am I doing do I really need like a Chanel single pink eyeshadow but I actually love this what's great about it is that like on those days where I wasn't didn't want to wear eyeliner because my eyes were just watering too bad like it's great for just this and then I put like some of that like mustardy urban decay eyeshadow in my crease and throw some mascara on and that was the look like this I a lot of people are like oh like uh, I remember back in the day people would be like, oh, MAC, all that glitters, like it's such a great wash of color on the lip. But like those kind of eyeshadows don't work for my skin tone, like as just a wash of color. Like I never like like the wash of color looks, but this actually works really well for me as that, I forgot to tell you what it's called. It's called Blooming Rose. I'm not sure if this is a limited edition shade or not. It came out like as part of a spring collection. They have so many new collections right now. I'm like kind of overwhelmed, but I love it and I think it's worth it, but you might not. It's at your discretion. So I think universally people will agree that these are worth it though. These are the Stila um, Shimmer and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows in the shades Carefree and Cloud. 
these are so oh I should probably swatch that Chanel eyeshadow maybe maybe that would be wise but like you see it doesn't really look like much I even got like a clear eyeshadow because I almost always use I can't even see where I swatched it it's very light like I'm not I'm not joking but um I even got a clear eyeshadow base to wear with that that's how much I love it because I usually always wear like a cream eyeshadow and usually I wear like a mustardy color or like a brown eyeshadow base and I was like no I needs to be clear for that but anyways carefree is just a really pretty pink color with kind of like a little bit of like a golden sheen it's very pretty and then cloud is very like kind of a hard to describe color it's like lilac and taupey but these just both look so gorgeous on the lids and I usually wear these over something else but they dry down completely and they don't irritate my eyes at all which was always my concern with like a liquid eyeshadow my eyes get irritated easily and water up and stuff like that so yeah um oh my god are we at lip products now miracle of miracles First of all, I literally cannot live without eyeliner right now. It's so funny. I think about back in the day when I used to make videos when I first started and I would be like, oh, like even at the, I remember going to like the counters and I'd be like getting a YSL lipstick because I was so like YSL lipstick is still kind of my jam to be honest. Um, I would go to YSL counter and look at lipsticks and they'd be like, oh, do you need a liner? I'd be like, no, who needs lip liner? Like I was so like totally unaware of the power of lip liner and now I love it because also my lips are a little bit cr like one of them one of my lips is a little higher than the other one on the, my upper lip and so I'm obsessed I can't not wear lip liner now but these three have been my hands down favorites lately that I've been wearing with everything so MAC cork which is just like a medium brown um, Charlotte Tilbury super size me which is more of a pinky nude and then Pat McGrath Supernatural. I'm going to swatch them all for you because you know me. I'm not going to leave you hanging. But so Charlotte Tilbury Super Size Me wasn't even like on my radar as one of like the shades that I was interested in from the new range um, until I saw it in store. So this is Cork. That's Super Size Me and that is Supernatural. So the whole thing is, is I feel like lighter nude liners don't just don't show up on me or like don't like do it. I want something that's a little bit darker that I can kind of blend into the lip to give me some depth. So that's what I kind of look for in a liner. But I think all these are really nice and go with a lot of lip colors. Like I'll wear like cork with a red lip. Like it's when you blend it in, it just looks like the lines of your lips. So anyways love that um, I've been really into layering lip products so most of the time I will use one of the YSL tattooish coutures as my base color um, and these are my two like hands down favorites I have a few that I love 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 but these are the two that I use the most this one I love on its own too it's number seven and this one is number 28 I will swatch them What's funny is it's like, I remember at first I was like, oh, this applicator, like what a gimmick, like you don't need, it. and now I'm like, this applicator is the best invention ever. It gets like the edges of your lip, the contours of your lips, like so well, it was genius. Plus I just love this formula. It's so lightweight and comfortable. And I was shocked. So Dupe That did a video about like products that suck and this was one of them and I was like no I love it so much and most of my friends that I've tried it to love these and I was like how do you not like them because I love almost I love a lot of the, the lip products I love so this is number seven and that's 28 so you can see they're both just like nice nudes but they work really well layered like with other products layered on top of them too they're really comfortable so um, they also go well with other products underneath them. That's one of the, they're just really versatile. So to me, they're worth the money. And then, oh my God, I have so many <laughs> lip products. What's funny is I was like, God, I don't think I'm gonna have that many lip products because I've just been rotating the same ones out. But I guess like when I haven't done a video in forever, it's gonna seem like a lot. This one is probably my favorite of favorites. Um, this is Chanel Eteria 
which when I first got it, I was like, oh, it's so pretty, but I was like, this might be too light. You can tell that I've been layering it with things because the applicator is kind of, has like a brown tone, but it's like this pretty pink. But what I've been doing, I'm wearing it today actually, over Bite Cremini. Like look at what it, like how it transforms a lip color. Like it'll take something, it, dri it dries down fairly matte too. It's kind of similar, this is the Rouge Allure Ink formula. It's kind of similar to the YSL Tattooish Couture formula. I do like the YSL a little better. Um, it's more like even, but um, this is so nice over other lipsticks. I've been wearing it constantly. Like I probably should buy backup because I think it's good. I'll probably run out of it. That's how much I love it. Then this one I also have been loving. This is Pisces by Bite. It's this like orangey color. Ah, oh, so pretty. Plus I, I just love Bite lipsticks. Like Bite is probably, Bite and YSL are probably my two favorite lipstick brands, not gonna lie. Um, then this one from Lancome. These are all lipsticks that I love for layering too. So this is the shade Au Naturel. It's a cream finish in the La Absolute Rouge formula. That is that one there. It's just a nice nude, but again, looks much better with a liner or like over another product. This one I have used a ton. Like it's like messed up is how much I carried around with me. This is um, Tom Ford Auto Erotique. This one I usually just wear on its own. It's kind of a great like just throw on nude. So that's that one right there. Again, wasn't even on my radar until I saw it on the counter and was like, holy moly, I need that. This, I think, is a new shade by Milani. It's called Tropical Nude. It's number 86. Um, this is another one that I like layering with things or using a liner with. Put that by Ateria. So that's that color there. I always think that these smell like watermelon candy, like watermelon Starburst or something. Or like, uh, what were they called? Like, not bazooka. There was like a candy from the 80s that they smell like, like exactly. I got one of the new um, YSL Volupt color, liquid color balms, and these are so nice too. <laughs> it's so cute, it's a little lip. Oh my God. They're always like crazy with the applicators. Um, crap, I'm getting a message that I need to go. So this is just this color, really nice with a liner or nice on its own, very comfy. This one, um, the Chanel Rouge Coco Stylo in the shade Poesy, number 228. It's just a really pretty pink nude. You can tell like what my preferences have been lately. Oh wait, no, that's this one. That's that one. And then just two more, I think, that's it. This is, or no, three more. The Rouge Coco Lip Blush, I, again, one shade. I've been good about like, I used to get like multiple shades of like everything before I knew if I liked the formula of something or not. This is a like pretty matte stain. Here it is right here. But it's really pretty. And I actually really like this color on me too. It's kind of a darker pink actually, more rosy. Um, these are actually, I love both of these so much, but they're actually almost dupes. I'm gonna see like swatching my hand because in my mind they're dupes, but we'll see if they actually are. So this is a new Tom Ford lip sheer in the shade Nudist. And where can I switch this? So that's Nudist. So pretty, slightly metallic. And then this is the model's own Cheat Day Lip Glaze in the shade Creme Brulee. Yeah, they definitely are similar. Oh, that is a score right there. So that's the lip glaze by Model Zone, and that's the Tom Ford lipstick. So um, throwing a little dupe out there for you. Those are definitely dupes. Um, so I love that. And one gloss. I've kind of been liking glosses again, but this one is probably my most used one. This is the um, Pixie Lip Lift Max in Sweet Nectar. It's just such a pretty, like, basic, nudie, peachy pink shade. It's, the lighting's really bad right here. It's not showing up. But maybe you can see, like, in the bottle, it has, like, a slight shimmer, but it's not really obvious on the lips or anything. It smells a little bit minty, very comfy, not sticky at all. That's everything, you guys. This video is, gonna, is like, 35 minutes, I think. 
Holy crap. I gotta go. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Love you!